I am going to, <coughs> excuse me, I am going to say Sairam to the Baba within every one of you because he is in every one of you and in every, everywhere we look. I don't know whether you have noticed that since his passing, he's much more available for all of us, everywhere, constantly guiding us. I remember a long time ago, back in 1973, when my husband and I first went, or came rather, no, went, it was in Whitefield, to see him. And in those days, there were very few white people, or, or um, what shall I say, um, people from different countries. And he would always give a farewell, um, uh, a farewell interview in those days. And I was very curious. This was our first experience of Baba. And I was wondering, what are we going to do next? Do we come back or do we just live our lives? And so I, in those days, was very shy. But I did get enough up, up, up enough courage to ask him, what do we do, Baba? Now we've come to see you. Do we come back? What, what is your advice? And I shall always remember. He pointed his finger at me and he said, first, you must remember, you do not need to come back to see this little body pointing to himself. And there was a pause to let that message sink in. And next he said, you must find me, my counterpart, in your own heart. And then there was another pause. And he said, yes, you will come back to be re-energized. So many of us, of course, have been coming back regularly to be re-energized. And now, so many people are wondering what to do next, just as I did way back in 1973. And I feel that it's incredibly important for us not to think of Baba in that physical body. He once showed me a wonderful inner scene. He came to me as Baba, yes, but shining with a wonderful, gleaming light body. And I was startled. It was when he had his first operation, his first hip operation, and we were in Whitefield. And when he left for the hospital, the whole hall was completely emptied. Nobody was allowed in there. But in my inner scene, I was astonished. He was up on the, on the, um, uh, on the uh, days, but not like our barber, whom we all recognize. Yes, in the middle was the barber we recognize, but all around was this wonderful, wonderful light. And I was so overcome with, an incre with the incredible image he was giving me. 
And then it was as if I heard his voice in my head, as sometimes does happen. And what he said was, this is my real body, not the one you come to visit. And from that light body, he went on to explain, and it was coming into my mind, and I was really quite startled, that he could project himself from that real body, the real Baba, into him, the, 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 the body we know, but also he could appear anywhere in the world, as he has often done. And as he can now, even more easily, since he's not in this body that we all love so much. Yes, we see his samadhi, but that's not where Baba is. That reminds us, of course, of how we used to love to come to see him. But that's not his most important message. That's why I can't think of him buried in this grave. No. That makes him too small. He's everywhere in all of us. So, when I was asked to come today to speak to all of you, I knew that I couldn't possibly give you the impression that I was mourning. I'm not mourning his loss, and we shouldn't. He doesn't want us to. That makes him too small. He's everywhere. And I remember one time when he, we were waiting for him to come into an interview, and he looked around at us all, and we were wondering what he was going to say this time, or what he was going to do this time. And he said, you are, we are all like light bulbs. And we were all rather astonished. He said, yes, some of you will radiate maybe 20 wattage, wattage. Some of you maybe 60 or 80. But Baba radiates thousands of light bodies. Light watches, uh, uh, watch, excuse me. And this is his message. It's the Papa in each one of you that I want to address today. And not mourn him. No. It's a relief that he's out of that body. I felt such compassion when I saw him so sick. We should rejoice that he's no longer here. Yes, we miss him, of course. Yes, we would ask him to do things for us. But again, I remember he said, I have come and I will, ask, I will give you whatever you ask, hoping that at some time you will ask me what I have come to give you. And that is another of his most important sayings. Many people have said to me, but he's not there anymore. I can't ask him for this or that or the other. Of course he's everywhere. But why don't we all just ask, what have you come to give me? How can you use me as your instrument? This is his most basic message. This is one we can all follow. We don't have to be brilliant. We don't have to have college degrees. It doesn't matter who we are. We are all, in his eyes, equally important. And I remember when I first understood that, it was such a huge relief. I had always been brought up that I was insignificant probably wouldn't amount to anything in England when the rules were very strict. And it was such a relief to be told by Baba that we're all equal in his eyes. Nobody is any worse than anyone else. 
nobody is any better. We are all equal because we're not these bodies. We're not these minds. We're not these monkey minds as he always uh, referred to them. They are what get in the way. We have to make contact with, as he said to me all those years ago, with who we really are, the light within us, so that we can go anywhere in the world and shine that light and see it in everyone else. That's his most important message right now. Not that he's buried here. No, no, no. That makes him much too, too difficult to be in contact with. We should look at everyone around here today and see his image. Because when he showed me this incredible light body, he also said, in my mind again, to my astonishment, when you concentrate on this light body that I'm showing you, it will bring you closer to the light body in other people, but also in yourself. This is his message. This is what he really wants us to learn, but also to live. Yes, he's given us wonderful, wonderful teachings. So many of them, it's a little confusing. We don't know which one to follow. But he's also always said, just follow one. And I remember so many times he would say, I've spoken to you, I've written my messages, my teachings, but I want you to practice those in your everyday life. So we have to realize that we are, each one of us, never mind our age, never mind whether we're a man or a woman, a mother or a grandmother or a grandfather, we can all radiate his love. We can all be his instruments. And that means always, what do you want to give me? How do you want to use me? I always remember reading a wonderful, uh, a wonderful quote from Baba. And oddly enough, just before I left home to come here, I found it on my desk. And it still is an extraordinarily wonderful message that we have to concentrate on who we are. We need to say yes to him, but not yes, let me be this way or that way or that or another way, but yes, use us as your instrument. That's his most important message. We can be his message messengers. This particular one was when you say yes to me. We all need to say yes to Baba. Use me as your instrument. Not the way I want you to use me. Uh-uh. Not the way other people want to use us. But how does Baba want to use us? I think when I first went to see Baba all those years ago, when I was afraid to open my mouth and speak to anyone, and I remember another interview when I was supposed to be giving my very first seminar in my own birth country in England, I was terrified. And we went to Baba first, and then we'd go to England. And he said to me, Mrs. Crystal, why are you so worried? And I just told him, I'm terrified. We're going to England, and for the very first time, I have to give a talk, and I can't. 
And he looked at me with a wonderful smile, making fun of me, but in a lovely, loving way. And he said, but Mrs. Crystal, you talk all day long. I said, yes, but only to one person at a time. And he said, but one plus one plus one plus one equals one. All are one. And then he gave me the most extraordinary advice. He said, when you're giving your talk, think of just one person. You're only talking to the God self in each person. You only need to talk to one. So we left and went to England. And I stood up and I thought, oh my God. Oh, and he said also, but I will help you. And I stood there and they were all therapists. Very, very uptight. What does this woman going to teach us? And I said to him inside my head, okay, you promised, now it's up to you. And to my surprise, the words just came. And it lasted a whole weekend. But then, the way I was in those days, I said, yes, but that's just one time. Will it ever happen again? And then the next time, I repeated it and remembered what he said. And again it worked. And it's continued to work. We all need to say yes to Baba. Not to the Baba that's buried here, but to the Baba that's everywhere in the world, in every one of you. Another interview I remember so distinctly. He came dancing into the room and looked around at us all. And he said, who do you think I see when I look into your eyes? We hadn't a clue, any of us. And he said, when I look into your eyes, I see a reflection of myself. So we need, when we look into someone else's eyes, to see the reflection of Baba, who's everywhere now, not just here at the, at, at the ashram, certainly not in the grave there. I can't bow to the grave. No, I'm sorry. I have to bow to all of you because you are who he is, scattered in all the different countries. And we have an enormous mission. We're all part of his mission. And it's an incredible opportunity. It's an incredible blessing. We don't know what's going to happen. Many people are terrified. What's going to happen in 2012? Does it matter? No. Because if we are really saying yes to Baba, he will put us wherever we're needed to help others. We don't have to worry. This has been proven my entire very long life. He's always there when we call, but not here in Puttaparthi. Yes, he was the wonderful example of how we all can be. Giving, yes. Loving, by all means. That's what he wants to teach us. So. I have learned that when I really ask for his love to flow into me, and then I remember him a vital, alive, joking, laughing, joyful, then I can imagine that his love is really flowing into me, and from my own barber as well. He used to call it to me, God self. I like to call it Baba self. And then we can just radiate it to others. This is what we all need to do. Look at how many people there are here. A whole army. And what are we going to do? We have to do, uh, follow his mission now. We have to take over. 
He's not here in his wonderful form any longer. But you know, he's always told us not to be attached to that form, that he would leave sometime. And I think he had to leave, because he, if he had lived much longer, not listening to what he told, uh, with us not listening to what he told us, that he's not the body, it would not have helped us. He's freed us now. Now we have to find his counterpart in our own heart. So right now, why don't you just look at whoever is sitting next to you and realize that here is an example of Baba. Here are examples, here are examples. And see who he is within you. Because we are all walking temples. He told us that in an interview long ago. Came dancing into the room, looked around and said, you don't know who you are. You think you're the body. No, you're all walking temples. The temple, the body, contains your real self. So we need now that he's not here any longer to use him, yes, as our example of Papa showering his love everywhere to everyone so that we practice the most important lesson that he's taught any of us. Radiate his love wherever you are in the world. Be a light. Be a light to everyone. Not from your ego, not because you're special, not because you're brilliant, and certainly not because of that monkey mind that gets in the way. And the other thing, of course, is that we really do need to remove the covers over our light. And they are all of our habits, all of our negative qualities, our negative traits, rather. We all have all of them. We don't always recognize it. I remember one time when we were at the ashram, there was one woman from the from this United States who broke every single rule. And we were all horrified that she was the one, a woman, that Bob took for a ride in his car. And all the youth that were there at that time came to many of us, said, why does she get such a wonderful privilege? And we have to be so strict. And she breaks every rule. It's not fair. And in those days, Jack Hislop always was able to ask Barbara questions. So we asked him, we said that the youth are in rebellion. They don't understand. Will you please ask Barbara? And this was Barbara's answer. First of all, the next morning, it was in Whitefield, and we were all there, and Barbara went up to Jack Hislop and said, Hislop, you have a question. And he said, yes. The youth are very worried. They have to, they have to go along with all the rules, and it's very difficult for them when you take this lady who breaks every rule in your car, which is the most wonderful privilege. And Barbara smiled and said, I do it on purpose. To stir up in everyone the jealousy, the envy that nobody wants to look at. We have to work on ourselves, not criticize someone else. You can't change anyone else. You may think you can, but it doesn't last. They may put on a good act just to please you, but they won't change, not when you just tell them to. You can only change yourself. 
and we have so many of his teachings. There are so many of them. We have to use them, especially now that he's not here. He's left a body, a body of teachings. He's left all of us as parts of him. So let's not mourn. It's not a sad occasion. He's freed us as he's freed ourselves. So we do need, though, to work on ourselves so that we will be able to recognize, yes, I'm jealous, yes, I'm selfish, yes, I'm greedy, yes, I'm envious, yes, I get angry, and then let go. He always used to say, just give those qualities to me. I can handle them. So this will be the way for us to really see Baba in everyone. Not to criticize the personality. No, that's just the temple. The real person is what Baba symbolized, what he epitomized, what he showed us as, as, a, as an example. So right now, let's look around at everyone in this room and feel Yes, I too have a, a wonderful light body that's my real self. Let me send the light to all the people in the room here and to everyone you meet. Then you will be a light to take Papa's message to continue his wonderful life. Om Sai Ram.